choosing me for this amazing award. Thank you to the trustees and to the faculty and to all the students who took time today to come here. Thank you to my fellow award winners. I was thinking last night how fun it would have been for us to be a jewel. And I'll let you figure this out, but I was thinking one of us would have been the person that said, let's go get into trouble. <laughs> one of us would have been the person that said, maybe helped us get out of trouble. I'll figure out who that is. And one of us, as a preventionist, would have said, hey guys, I don't think we should do that in the first place. <laughs> so, I also want to thank my family and I, my friend who travels far, Nicole and Allison, uh, to come back to the Hill with me. Most of, I want to thank my husband because if there was one person that should be standing up here accepting this award with me, it is my husband. And this is so important because as a very strong, bossy woman, he has never asked me to be anything less than who I am. Uh, and I could not have achieved all that I have achieved from uh, back in my school days to now without my husband Lance. I want to leave you with three things that I learned at William Jewell that I still apply every day in my life. When I came to William Jewell, I was driving a 1984 brown Chevy Cavalier, the most depressing looking car, it had rust all over it. And it was probably God ordained because as a first generation college student, I showed up at Jewell with scholarship money and not much else. I had no roadmap to how to get through college. And my car broke down so much that I never left. So I just had to stay here, and that's how I met my two amazing friends. Um, but most people, if you Google me, you will hear or read all of my success. You will read how I was the first and only youngest female tenured professor in my department in 45 years at the University of Nebraska. You will read how I was the first woman and first clinical scientist in my department to ever get an NIH grant. You will read how I've won awards through the AMA and all of these other things. But that's not what I'm going to talk about in the next five minutes because that's not what taught me. What taught me were my failures. And my daughter asked me not to cry. I'm sorry, I've already failed. See, she's really good at it. So the first thing that I want to teach you in five minutes is failure is your best teacher. I arrived at William Jewell Valedictorian in my little small town, Nebraska. I thought I was really smart. I showed up and I had Dr. Ann Dima, who I'm staring directly at, I love that I can see you right now. And I got to my first test and it came back at a 68. And I sat there shaking, thinking I'm not gonna be able to be a doctor. I cannot smart enough to do this. And I went and talked to her, and she looked at me and said, well, did you read the syllabus? I said, the syllabus? What's that? Uh, she said, well, now I think, she never said to me, you can't do this. She didn't say, you should drop out of pre-med. She didn't say, you can't take chemistry and microbiology and all of the next year's courses. She said, you need to study. And so I looked next to me, and there was a really skinny, tall, nerdy-looking guy, and I snuck and looked at his score, and I said, do you want to be my friend? <laughs> and that has served me all throughout my career because now still in the operating room, when I am taking care of a critically ill patient, and that patient's dying, like on Tuesday night, I have no problem running next door and getting one of my smart partners and saying, I need help. Can you be my friend? I do that every day of my life. So failing is what taught me how to succeed. And although I've won many awards and accolades, success has not taught me anything. It has been my failures. So embrace failing and learn how to fail forward. And to me, that's asking for help, asking smart people around you and getting diverse thinkers. The second lesson is lean into discomfort. It's really hard for me. I speak all the time and I walk, and so I'm really having a hard time standing right here. But lean into the discomfort. That is what I learned at William Jewell. I learned the more I didn't understand something, the more time I had to lean in and understand it. It was like embraced here. I learned that if I didn't like organic chemistry, I had to work extra hard at it, and that meant that semester I was gonna have to spend 60% of my time on organic chemistry. I leaned into this comfort, and where has that helped me? Well, it has helped me when I have been the only woman at committee meetings and national board meetings, and I have opened the door of the board meeting, and I'm already super uh, have imposter syndrome going through my head as the only woman. And I sit down at the board meeting and I'm seeing professors from Yale and Harvard and Hopkins.
Hopkins and Stanford, and then little old University of Nebraska William Jewell grad who lives in a cornfield. And you know what? It's not fun. It's not fun to be the only woman in the boardroom. But I have leaned into the discomfort because I have learned that that's where I belong and that's where I grow. And let me tell you, it took about five years till I was leading that board. Um, so you have to lean in. There's going to be times in your life where you don't feel like you belong. You may be the only person that looks like you. You may be marginalized. Other people may be telling you you don't have a seat at the table. Lean into that discomfort. That's where real growth happens. And the third and final thing that I learned at William Jewell is if you can see it, you can be it. Because Dr. Ann Dimas was nine, ten months pregnant when I started, I think. She was waddling all over campus. <laughs> She was so bossy, and I was so inspired by her. <laughs> and she would tell us, you know, she would look at, it didn't matter who it was, like she would just hold the line. And I didn't know, because I had Dr. Judith Diltz, who was an amazing professor and chairwoman, I didn't know that women weren't going to lead in medical school. I didn't know that we are only 8% of leaders in healthcare, while we are 83% of the workforce in healthcare. So at Jewel, I learned that women could lead and I could have a family and be a leader. I could be bossy and show up and be authoritative and save my patient's life when they're dying. I learned that, and it wasn't until I went to medical school and then it was primarily all men leading that I realized how abnormal that was. So when I went to medical school and when I went to residency and fellowship, and then I started actually being the person in the room that had to direct a code or save a patient's life or in the boardroom, I had my mentors, Dr. Diltz and Dr. Dima, in my brain. And some of the biggest uh, talks I've given, I was 10 months pregnant standing on stages. I did that because I had those mentors. And if you can see it, you can be it. So you may be the only person that looks like you in the room. You may be the only person who doesn't have an Ivy League degree or all these other things and accolades, but you may be that person for some so, as you leave this room today, students, remember to fail forward. Remember to lean in the dis into the discomfort. And remember to be it so someone else